The picturesque scenic rim is just over an hour from Brisbane and the Gold Coast. It's a growing tourist destination, but at its heart, this series of fertile valleys is farming country. The Tomarup family has farmed here since 1874 in a pocket called the Lost World. Dave is fifth generation. It's a very big responsibility, I suppose, in a way to have a um, fifth generation farm where you, you sort of, you wouldn't want to do something to lose the farm. When dairy deregulation hit 18 years ago, it looked like he'd be the last. We started at about 65 cents a litre, averaging that, and then we went down to around 30 overnight. Could you make money? Could you be profitable getting 30 cents a litre for your milk? No, no way. Not a chance. Dave's parents also really struggled with what was happening because there were two families at that time and, and we couldn't make wages for two families. There's no way. The couple took on extra jobs at the local school. Kay drove a bus, Dave did the grounds. But it was clear even with the off-farm income, the 80 hectare farm could only support one family. So Dave's parents left and Kay and Dave took over full time. We're just going to put everything that we have into this idea and if it works, that's great. If it doesn't, we've given it our best shot. The first change the couple made was to cut their small herd from 60 to a tiny 48, making it one of the smallest commercial dairy herds in Queensland. If you say you're milking 25 cows in a room full of dairy farmers, it's just like, you're a complete joke. Um, and before, we were ashamed of it, I suppose. The dairy was barely a break-even proposition. They didn't have the resources to get bigger, so decided to diversify. Kay thought of milk. With only the best going to its customer, Norco, they were throwing some out. It was terrible watching that milk be thrown away. Just, we were just throwing it out, out the back on the paddock. Um, and then I started harping on <laughs> about getting pigs and not wasting the milk. And, and that was the next part of the diversification, was into the pigs. And how hard was it, Dave? Because you don't like pigs, do you? Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, I remember pigs when I was little. My parents had them and I just... No, I just didn't really like them at all. <laughs> but um, somehow I got talked into that. <laughs> they run two heritage breeds, the cranky Tamworths and the more amenable large blacks. So we wanted to find a more docile breed and the large blacks are supposed to be that and they are just the most magnificent pigs. Love them, absolutely love them. Do you love them, Dave? I'm getting to love them now, yes. <laughs> they are very friendly pigs, yeah, they're great. They added free-range laying chickens, dairy beef, sheep and goats, and a farm shop. Hello. Kay. Okay. Hello. <laughs> From their larder, they sell their yearling beef, pork, vegetables and cheese made locally from their milk, as well as produce from local farmers. Have you tried that one before? Mmm, I think I got it last time. Ah, I remember that. <laughs> The final piece of the puzzle was renovating a homestead and cottage for farm stays. While individually each operation generates small returns, tourism made the farm profitable. And we look at it as a whole business now, so each element has to be there, otherwise it's just not what it can be. It's the wide range of livestock operations visitors like the Lee family from Singapore will pay to see, touch and smell. Wow, that's got it. It's a different experience for us and I want to expose them to some farmer's life. Yeah, because back in Singapore we, we do not have this opportunity to experience it. Um, Would you recommend it to your friends back in Singapore? Uh, yeah, definitely, for, especially for families with kids. 
yeah, they, they look at things differently and she already says that what, it's hard to be a farmer. <laughs> On day one, Giselle and Aiden were tentative with the animals and bothered by the flies. Oh my god, the chicken! Ah! Oh my, oh my. The next day, though, they were having fun and reveling in the space. The rooster? Yeah, it's very funny. They were running around and they were like a bit scared, but it's rooster. funny. <laughs> rooster! Cow! And they like the guinea pig. We're trying to give them backstage pass to our farm and show them what they wouldn't see if they're just looking at, you know, going in and, and patting a few animals at a petting zoo or something like that. This, this is a real farm. People leave here and they say, we've had the best time, thank you for sharing your farm with us and that's, that's a pretty good reward. Our kids don't want to go home yeah. and it's like, see your farmer Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, it's and the um, case as well, so it's, it is nice to see that, yeah. With so many mini enterprises, the workload here is unrelenting. I think it's a joint thing that you do. I think it's about working as a team. Yeah, I'd be, um, I'd be pretty lost without Kay. <laughs> without her, I wouldn't get half the things that I need to get done and um, we wouldn't have survived. A role model for women in agriculture, she's also an ambassador for small family farms, which she says are making a comeback, as consumers seek closer connections with those who grow their food. She says they'll never forget, though, the early days, when they were told countless times they had only one option, to get big or get out. As long as you're passionate about something, you can succeed. It doesn't matter if you're different, just as long as you're giving it your best shot. We've got a business that's successful. We're doing it the way that we want to, and it's okay. So we're proud of it now.